Before we start, I need to acknowledge one thing before going into this, because there's gonna be a lot of complaining. I am cynical towards the Amazing Spider-Man films. I'm cynical towards the production of them. I'm cynical towards their existence. Because it's exactly what those films are. They are cynical towards Spider-Man, they're cynical towards the medium, and they're cynical towards audiences. If you want to know why I feel that way, I've made videos about the Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Today, I'm going to be talking about the unused concepts that never made it to the final film. Because looking through these unused concepts, you can usually find a lot of creative ideas and think, hey, maybe I'd like to see that in a future movie. Maybe that's something that had potential. Maybe maybe that's a good thing. But it can also be a lot of fun to just take a step back and think critically and be like, yep, that's why that wasn't used. Now, the thing is, the thought process behind the initial production of The Amazing Spider-Man was very bizarre. It was very much just be different to Raimi. Make this different to what Raimi did. Make this film for those that didn't like the Raimi films. And personally, I don't get that thought process, because personally I just think if you don't like the Raimi Spider-Man films, then you don't really like Spider-Man. Agree? Disagree? It doesn't matter, you know? Like, every, every, everyone works differently. But that's just my stance on this thought process. And that thought process very much comes across in some of these concepts. I'll say this, I've always found it pretty amusing going through concept designs for Spider-Man movies so far, like the uh, MCU ones we've done so far have been pretty interesting, because you see... In the MCU ones, there's a lot of comic book inspiration from different designs for Spider-Man that are not traditionally seen on the big screen. Which is actually interesting because for starters, you're seeing a realized version of a comic design in Ryan Meenading's very detailed, realistic, painted style. But the thing that's always amused me most is how you go through all these very different Spider-Man designs to land on just the traditional again. But the same is even truer here than it was in those Marvel Cinematic Universe designs. So sit back relax, subscribe, we're going to be taking a look at some of the concept suit designs for The Amazing Spider-Man 1. So obviously the goal of The Amazing Spider-Man 1 was to be completely different to Raimi and get people to forget all about those Raimi films, and what better way of doing that than by recycling the Raimi design? Now I'm guessing this was very early on in production, and I'm guessing there was quite a dilemma of where to go with this suit, because like, well, where do you really go from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit? It's a... Uh, it's a perfect Hollywood design for Spider-Man. And if you stray too far from it, you're straying pretty far from what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man, surely. Now, this design is not exactly Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. The web patterns around the shoulders flow very differently. The webs are a lot more random looking, and the suit looks much more sort of... I don't know, it's, it's not as for me. It doesn't look as Hollywood and stunty, although it does keep the same design elements in there. The red is a little darker, but the blue is quite a bit brighter, and it definitely looks to have more of a rubbery texture to it than the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit did. Uh, that could just be because of how it's rendered. It could be that it was intended to be much more clothy, but looking at sort of the creases in this costume does tell me that this was probably meant to be more of a rubbery suit than what we'd seen before. But yeah, it's basically just a formless version of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit. Well, it's still a form, but it's just not the same, and... I think this definitely would have kept the Raimi suit in our heads, but done worse. It would have shown us, ah, so it's just Raimi, but worse. Which is basically what The Amazing Spider-Man 1 was in some ways. Oh, God. Sorry, bit of a weird reaction, that one. I tried to be kind of kind to people involved in designing Spider-Man costumes and everything. But th this is just, um... Obviously, the goal was, you know, stray away from Raimi, and this is certainly not Raimi. So obviously there are parts of the artwork here that's not going to necessarily complement the overall design, such as the musculature of it. Like, obviously Spider-Man wouldn't have the muscles of a naked body, <laughs> for sure. So I'm guessing that the texture would be intended to be very different to what we have here, because what this looks like is a painted naked body. So I'll say this, it's certainly original, certainly unique. <laughs> Um, and it, it does very much have a lot of the structure of a classic Spider-Man suit in some regards, but done in more of a radical sort of a way. It's, it's got everything that makes Spider-Man, but done very differently. The boots ride extremely high up the thighs. Spidey's belt and torso are more or less the same, but they're more arrow-shaped. He's got a spider on the chest, but this time it's on one particular side of the chest, as opposed to slap bang in the middle, and it's massive. He's even got a spider on the leg. The eyes seemingly stretch to the back of his head, not really what the practical use for that is. Uh, he's got the web wings. That's that's one thing that's actually quite good about this, is he's got a form of web wings. Either that or that's a web cape. We can't really tell in this picture because perspective and everything. In fact, looking at it, um, it doesn't seem to join where the... You can see it's very much behind his arm, so maybe that's a cape. Oof. 
you you lose one point there. That's outlandish. That's very outlandish, and it's very uh, different to any Spider-Man costume before it, but not in a good way. Like, why do you want to be too different to what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man, you know? And that's just my exact thoughts towards this. It's just, ugh. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, this is... We're going in an even more outlandish direction here. So if you were just kind of crop it in so that you couldn't see the lower half of this suit, so you couldn't see his legs, it just feels like kind of an edgy classic Spider-Man. It's an edgy version of the classic Spider-Man look. The eyes are jagged, the spider is jagged, the webs are messy. Kind of gives Spider-Man a villainous look, which definitely isn't right, but it's like, whoa, this villainous Spider-Man. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Spider-Carnage. Then we zoom out and see his legs and, ah, uh, why? Why are his legs red? That's just not done. That's just not right. Come on, man. So obviously they wanted this to be an edgier Spider-Man, which again, wrong. Like, Spider-Man is the opposite of edgy. He's never edgy. He's only ever edgy when he's got the symbiote. Like, in The Amazing Spider-Man, you tend to think, yeah, that's it. <laughs> how symbiote Spider-Man should act, but it's, it's not. So I guess this would fit the character of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man very well, actually. But uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's all wrong. It's it's too sinister. It's too scary. Why has he got these symbiote looking eyes? Why does he why does he look like a symbiote Spider-Man without actually being symbiote Spider-Man? And this is just evidence that they were approaching this all wrong. The thought process for this entire project was just off. Oh, hey, look, it's the Alex Ross Spider-Man, sort of. The blue is back on this one. It's not red and black. I guess they were a bit timid to really tackle red and black purely in this installment. They didn't really think about that until the Marvel Cinematic Universe Spider-Man came about and we started getting some Ditko love. In this case, um, it's very much the Alex Ross design, but again in edgy this time because once again, the uh, spider on the chest and the eyes are very jagged and it's got a lot of what sort of looks like cracks in the blue section. The webs again, messy. I'm sorry, but you take any Spider-Man design and make it edgy, then put it on a standard Peter Parker and it just doesn't work in my opinion. I'm not trying to deny the talent of the artists that design these suits and everything like the talent is clearly there it's just uh it doesn't it's, it's wrong-minded in my opinion much like the entire film <laughs> okay come on now be real what was the brief here legitimately any and all flow that the classic spider-man suit has ever had is just non-existent here the webs are all over the entirety of the body and that's original i'll give it that um, the, the blue patterns very much cut through a lot of the red, but the red cuts through a lot of the blue as well. It looks like the whole thing is connected in kind of a weird way, but it's just, uh, it's a very far cry from classic Spider-Man, put it that way. And the eyes are clearly meant to be a bit more practical, they're meant to be a bit more like sunglass lenses, I guess. I'm guessing this suit was supposed to illuminate, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Like, the design and the shading and the art style and everything can come across differently to how it would actually look on film, but I think there's a good reason as to why this didn't make it on film. Okay, this is definitely the best one we've had so far. The colors look a little more balanced. It looks more recognizably Spider-Man, of course. Again, it's very outlandish. The red is kind of fragmented for no real reason, to be honest. It doesn't really doesn't really add anything to the look in my opinion, but it's at least a lot more recognizably Spider-Man in this design than it has been in any of the previous ones. It evokes the Spidey feeling while it is quite a far removal of the classic design anyway. Something I'm noticing a lot of in these designs is they're not a big fan of the spider belt from the looks of things. I guess that was kind of always part of the goal is ditch the spider belt, have a bit more blue on the costume. And I guess Spider-Man having like a belt was quite an old school aspect of Spider-Man's design. Like superheroes always had kind of belt sections at that time. And I guess the the thought process was bring it up to date you know like the boots and the gloves are again a very old staple so how can we make those look a bit more modern but just like a word of advice to everybody when you try to take a classic timeless design that everybody loves and update it, it rarely works. It becomes dated. I've also noticed that the red stripe going down the arm has been completely omitted, and that's something we'd actually go on to see quite a lot post-2012 on Spider-Man suit designs, is the omittance of the red stripe on the arm. I, for one, usually prefer when they do have the red stripe, but I think there are a lot of instances where the red stripe has been removed and it's looked better for it. Like, can you imagine the Far From Home suit with the red stripe going down the arm? It just wouldn't look right. Whatever looks more streamlined, I guess. So this, I guess, is V2 of that previous design. Once again, definitely very clear that they wanted to introduce a lot more blue onto the Spider-Man suit. Uh, I think it's a bit of a sin to do it on the head, though. Kind of makes him look like the Vision in some regard. It looks almost like a hairline. 
fine. Definitely not right for Spider-Man to have blue on his head. The blue eyes, though, now that's that's not so bad. I kind of like the sort of spider-like leg sort of look to the red that's on the lower part of the torso this time. And he's got red going down his uh, legs. I was going to say trousers, but I mean legs. A design element that did make it to the final design. The blue definitely has more of a sort of a rubbery texture to it than it did in the previous design on this list. I think if you just take the blue off of the head, it is almost there. It would never be my ideal Spider-Man suit, but it's at least, you know, it's getting there. I think in this particular design here, there's a lot you can do to kind of fix it by reducing the color of the red, reducing just how bright and vibrant it is. The Amazing Spider-Man 1 film was pretty muted as it was, and I think it's really hard to kind of get a vibe of what kind of material this costume would be made out of in this universe. Some of these are clearly very simple renders. So it is very clear that in the mandate it was get rid of the Spidey belt, it was get some red stripes going down the legs, and it was introduce more blue onto the red sections, make it kind of more blended and intertwined with itself, because I'm definitely noticing that as a theme. And these were design aspects that made it to the final suit design. It's very fragmented, like a real spider is, so I can appreciate the ideas that went into this design here, but I just, I don't like it at all. Spider-Man is not supposed to look like a spider, he's supposed to look like Spider-Man. It's just, it's so over-designed and over-produced, and that, I, I mean, I do think the same of the final product, it looked over-designed and overproduced. As I say, you just can't stray too far from that classic Spider-Man look because classic Spider-Man is one of the greatest designs in history. I, I, I applaud them for trying, I, I applaud them for defying the norm, but this is just, it does, it, it's a good, it's a compelling reason to not redesign Spider-Man. So this one here was more kind of bundled in with the scenario scene concept art, so I guess it's probably not fair to really include this, but I'm going to anyway, because it does feature a different Spider-Man suit to anything we've seen on this list so far. And what do you know, it's a classic Spider-Man. And what do you know, it's by far the best one we've had. The Spider-Man design is classic and timeless for a reason, so it's the most respectful thing to do is to leave it alone. And I know that Steve Ditko's Spider-Man was designed for comic books, and these suits are designed for films, and comic books and films are two very different things, but Spider-Man's suit has been proven to translate greatly to live action before. Because it keeps things simple. It's a spandex suit that exists to look cool. And what do you know, this concept art has ended up being by far the best and most tolerable so far. Classic always wins, what do you know? Fragmentation was clearly a theme with the Amazing Spider-Man's design work. You can tell by the front and back spider logos on the final suit that fragmentation was what they were going for because actual spiders, pretty fragmented. They wanted to kind of make him look articular and jointed and this design definitely gives that off with Spider-Man having blue stripes inside the torso red section. The spidey belt is there, but it's fragmented and it does not connect with the rest of the suit. Now, here's something I would say is one thing I really appreciate about the Steve Ditko Spider-Man design is the fact that all of the red sections, except for the boots, connect up. I think when you break that connection too much, it loses a lot of that flow. There's an art to how they were able to interconnect all of the red sections on the Spider-Man suit, and it very rarely works when you fragment it, and here they've done that, and for me, it just it doesn't do it. The webbing, again, is more woven and intertwined. It's at least sort of symmetrical, and we're seeing an introduction here to the golden or yellow eye lenses as seen on the final Amazing Spider-Man design. And to answer, do you like the yellow eyes? The answer is no, I like white eyes. The yellow eyes make him look oddly demon-like. Yellow eyes is something I associate with the Green Goblin, not Spider-Man. So on this one, we got some very dark shades of red and blue. And again, Spidey Belt is completely gone. It's got more of an Alex Ross sort of Spider-Man cut out for the torso section, but with some red legs around it. The eyes, again, are yellow, don't like them. The hands have blue palms, but red fingers. And the webs are silver, like in the Raimi movies. This would have made an okay Spider-Man design. It would be at the bottom of my list for favorite live-action Spider-Man suits, but at the end of the day, it's not bad. I could get past it. All right, so we're in the end game now. We're moving into the suits that much more reflect the final suit that we got in the Amazing Spider-Man 1. And this here is pretty much it, except uh, around the glove section there's a lot more blue going on. 
the colors are definitely brighter than they were in The Amazing Spider-Man. The eye lenses are more boxy, but that could just be down to art style. The webs are silver, uh, which is much more in line with the Raimi movies. And I must say, I do like the silver webs on this suit design. Uh, the spider is much more classically inclined. It's much close to Raimi's chest spider and it's not fragmented. I actually don't mind this design here, and it could be partly just down to the art style, but it looks less needlessly fragmented. It looks a bit more flowy, like it should. It's very, very close to the design we actually got in the end, but I think it's pretty good. It kind of feels like a mix between the amazing Spider-Man costume, as worn by Andrew Garfield, and the Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark costume, as worn by Reeve Carney, which is a very strange costume, but I recommend you check it out. I still don't like the yellow eyes. It reminds me of the Green Goblin. It's not right. So this design here is very close to the pre-production suit mock-up that Andrew Garfield wore for screen tests, in that it is very, very close to the final design, but as you can see here around the head, the webs are fragmented. There is a gap in the webs that stretches across where the eyes go, framing the eyes in a way that we haven't seen before on a Spider-Man costume design, which almost feels kind of like a nod to one of the very first designs we looked at on this list, where the eyes stretched across to the back of the head. They kind of have it so that the eye framing stretches across to the back of the head, but the eyes on the inside are the normal Spider-Man eyes. Another thing is the webs are silver, which I actually really like. He's got this funny little device on the side of the Spidey belt, which is there. I'm not sure if it connects to the red in the center of the torso, so uh, it definitely doesn't go across his butt like it does on the final design. He doesn't have the blue cutting into his wrists either. The stripe on the arm is very, very thin. And uh, he's got these interesting silver webs going down his back. Gotta say, not a bad design. Very flowy. Not really sure how I feel about the fragmented webs on the head, though. So this here is the best one. This is the best concept design that we've had so far, in my opinion. It's not 100% accurate to the comics, but I, I really like this look. And I definitely prefer it to the look that we actually got in the film. It's a lot less over-designed. So this is very much a traditional Spider-Man costume in a number of ways, except the webs going down the front of the torso do run out as you get towards the bottom which I think is a nice little design motif is, you know, well, it runs down like a spider web would. The spider on the chest is pretty narrow and pretty tall, and it is in blue, which I think definitely complements the rest of the suit, and actually really complements the silver of the webs on this one. The webs are very traditional, but there's no webbing to be found on his belt, his boots, or his hands. Actually, scratch that, yeah, there is webbing on the boots. The line work in the blue definitely complements the form of the suit. The belt is actually there, they didn't omit the spider belt this time, except it's got little cuts in it, which kind of make it feel more like buckles in a way. The palms appear to have blue and black on them, which I don't have an issue with. Kind of breaks the flow of the red sections on the hands in a kind of a positive way, actually. The eyes are reflective and not yellow, and they're in the shape of the Ditko Spider-Man eyes. I feel like this is the ideal midway point between the amazing Spider-Man suit that we got in the end and the classic Spider-Man, and kind of with a bit of Raimi element in there too, with the front spider being raised. Definitely my favorite. Oh my god. Oh my god. This... This guy is nuts. Whoever designed this is crazy. Can you imagine if this were what we got in the final film? The Amazing Spider-Man would ironically become the best Spider-Man movie ever made. If you look at this from a distance and blur your eyes a little bit, it looks like this guy's just wearing a purple jumpsuit. And what's weird is it's got all the classic elements of classic Spider-Man. It's got red in there, blue in there, webs, a spider on the chest, and some pretty classic looking Spider-Man eyes to be fair. But it's just like, let's just take that and just mess it all up. Just completely mess it up. Up. The red bits, forget about it, we're just gonna smash them with a hammer. The webs all over him, lots and lots and lots and lots of webs. The spider, put it on his nipple. Who cares? I'm a god now. Yeah, no, this, this is hilarious. This is, this is really bad. This is really not a good design. That is exactly how not to Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Now, this is an interesting one, because this one actually made it off paper. This was the test version of Andrew Garfield's final Spider-Man suit. And in some ways, I honestly like it better than what we got in the end. I'll say this, it's got the cut off in the webs in the head. It's fragmented. It's got the framing around the eyes. That's something I really, really don't like. When it comes to Spidey's head, just keep it classic. But the color scheme of this one is a lot more pleasing. The webs are silver, which I guess they changed because they didn't want to be too much like Raimi. But I think silver webs really complements this suit design. Spidey's torso is no longer arrow shaped, cutting off flat at the bottom. Uh, the belt doesn't connect, which I just wish it did, to be honest. He 
feels kind of naked without it. The spider on the chest is solid, non-fragmented, and blue. The eyes are blue as opposed to yellow. I think it makes for kind of a nice sort of a two-tone Spider-Man costume. There are no webs going down the lower part of the torso past the spider, which I actually think looks kind of nice. I don't know, it's just kind of weird that they cut off at the spider, but like, I kind of feel like maybe just a few little webs going down would help, but... I like it more than loads and loads of little strands of web going down like what we have in the final product. Another thing is that this suit is very obviously nowhere near as textured as the final suit that we got, which looked kind of like a basketball in the end. The blue sections are a lot flatter, they don't have quite the level of black sort of hex patterns on them, and the red doesn't either, which honestly I think that's much more pleasing to the eye than what we actually have in the final film. If they could literally just restructure the webs on the head to look more like the classic version, this would have been the suit I'd have gone for for this film, if I had to choose between this and the final design. Which leads us to the end of our tour of the Spider-Man suits that didn't make it for the Amazing Spider-Man 1, and what ultimately led us here to this final design. An over-designed, over-textured, very messy, dirty-looking, edgy Spider-Man suit. You can definitely see a lot of design elements from the previous concept art in here. The fragmentation of the red sections, the fragmentation of the spider, the blue going down the legs, the lack of the belt, the yellow eyes. Now, truth is, yes, this is my least favorite Spider-Man suit. And I mean like in terms of final design, in terms of the sort of the final Spider-Man suit, the main suit that he has for this film. But that does, to be fair, say something. Because honestly, I don't think this is a bad Spider-Man suit. It's still immediately recognizable as Spider-Man, it still has a lot of what I love about this character in the design. I just think it's very overproduced and just in the wrong direction. It's just a misfire in my opinion. But I wouldn't say it's bad. What do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are links to my Patreon and my Discord. Channel Pup has been growing more than I could ever have anticipated over this very short space of time, and I'm absolutely honoured to see so many viewers participating in discussions and really enjoying my little projects here, but it's not without its obstacles. I'm currently a student studying film and television, and if I want to afford the general costs that come with living, unfortunately YouTube revenue just can't always cut that cheese. I recently moved in with my girlfriend's family, but this is not a permanent thing, it's just for the summer. And last year I've done the whole act of balancing YouTube, balancing a job, and balancing university, and trust me, the content suffers every single time. So to support this channel to maintain the same quality of content and upload schedule, and to just keep making the stuff you guys really seem to be enjoying, I really do urge you to check out my Patreon link in the description below, and in return you can get early access previews to the special channel pup events such as Marvelous Tales of Spider-Man Episode 2, as well as my upcoming Patreon exclusive playlist, Pups Project Room, which is all unlockable with a pledge of just one dollar or more. Now the world's a tricky place, not everybody is made of money, and that's fine, just please be here for my videos. Please don't stop coming back to join me on these discussions, because it means so much to me, guys, really. Well, I guess I best be hitting the old dusty trail. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I've been Channel Pop, and I'll think of a better catchphrase next time. Now please leave me alone!